Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Kami Dogu Podcast. I am Christopher Beljanovsky, and joining me in the virtual podcasting booth is the man, the myth, the legend, Toasty. Hello, hello, combatants. It's your boy, Toasty. Lieutenant Sonia Blade is in the house. Me and Chris have been very eager for this day. Uh, we're just a few minutes away with talking to an absolute legend. Uh, so grab a snack, sit back, and enjoy our conversation with the lovely Carrie Hoskins. Now, whether you're new here or you've been listening to us for a while, we really appreciate all of the support. Be sure to rate, review, follow, and subscribe wherever you listen or watch the podcast. And please remember to tell a friend about us. Without further ado, let's get to the show. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. It's been a while. I think what the last interview we did was 2013. Yeah, I was going to say, um, yeah, we did an interview um, a while back. I think it was 2014, actually. But yeah, you know, cool, seven years ago. So yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Well, I'm still here doing it. this morning. <laughs> Uh, so to start off, Carrie, now, I believe that you were born in Minnesota. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, I was. Uh, and that a few in your family were naturally talented painters and singers, songwriters. Mm -hmm. uh, what steered you toward modeling and subsequently stunt work? Um, had no desire to do so <laughs> my sister my older sister jody actually got into it and um she grew up saying you know since she was little going i'm gonna be a model i'm gonna be. and i used to make fun of her and um so she got into modeling and i i was just going to college i was gonna be a vet tech and um you know i grew up on a farm and stuff so i was i was going to college and my sister invited me down to florida to stay with her for the summer. I didn't have school going on, so um, met up with her and she was doing some modeling down there and I started to get into it because the photographers are like, hey, you wanna shoot with your sister? And I'm like, I don't know, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then Playboy came around and I started shooting with them and um, it all kind of started from there. And I decided that it was actually kind of fun and um, I got to travel and and so I got into it. Excellent. Nice. Um, you've started a number of games starting with uh, Midway at uh, NBA Jam. Um, mm -hmm. How did you first get involved with that title and how did that work eventually lead into Mortal Kombat? Um, NBA Jam was kind of just like a, a fluke. I was actually in the office at Playboy um, editing some photos and um, I actually did some production work with them besides the modeling. And um, Jack Hager had called into the office. He was looking for a couple models for this NBA jam. And I had no idea what the heck he was talking about. They're going to actually like put people in the game. <laughs> and so I said, sure, I'll do it. And then he said, bring a friend along. So I brought a friend. And I actually didn't even know how to do any kind of cheerleading or anything like that. But um, the girl that I shot with was actually a lovable. Um, she, you know, was a cheerleader for the Chicago Bulls. So okay. she was just oh, telling okay. me what to do on the side and I was copying her and um, my background with um, boxing and, and wrestling and gymnastics, you know, kind of got me through that. And, you know, I started doing more and more games with Midway. They asked me to do, I think it was Revolution X. That was another one of Jack Hagar's games. Yeah. And um, so I was Mistress Helga and the Cage Dancer for that game. Okay. And then was it Mortal Kombat 3 that was next or was it War Gods? I can't remember where War Gods came in. It was before or after MK3 or between MK3 and MK4. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah you don't remember what MK3. year it was? Possibly first. I don't remember any of the years and stuff. I have to like uh, check my wiki page sometimes to see what I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least someone keeps track, right? <laughs> <I see it. laughs> but um, yeah, so MK3 came around. They were looking for a new Sonya um, because in two, they didn't have her. And I think people wanted her back or something no. like that. So they asked me to, to do that part. And I said, sure, I'd love to. I don't know any karate, but you know. I had taken, I think I was like at the time a yellow belt 
in Tang Soo Do. Okay. So I'd taken a little bit, you know, just for self-defense because I had a couple stalkers and stuff beforehand. Um, so I was, I was taking, you know, gun control and learning how to shoot a gun. And yeah. also I was taking some karate so I could defend myself the next time, you know, a dangerous Shit situation. Shit goes down. <laughs> And um, so it was Carlos Pacino who was standing on the side for that game on MK3. And, you know, I was just copying the kicks and the punches. I already knew how to punch. And I knew some kicks, but he, you know, just kind of walked me through the sequences and stuff. Mm -hmm. When it comes to MK3 and uh, your adventure as Sonia, did you have any creative input uh, throughout the shooting was there anything in particular that you can remember you sort of added oh john and ed had a script and you know this is where it gets funny because there's other people that say hey i i created this move and i created that move they right. had a script and they knew what they wanted it was basically they bounced off the characters to see what they could do you know so um, they're like, Hey, can you do this? Can you do that? I'm like, yeah. And I can also do this. So then they would make another move, you know, like, um, I would do a handstand and I think that's where they made up the leg grab or something. And sometimes okay. I would just sit there and like do gymnastics and stuff and they would make their own moves to go with it. You know, I would show them, Hey, I can do this. And, um, it, like my friendship move, you know, we were between shots and um, it took a long time for the computers to load at the time because there was enough RAM <laughs> for what they were doing. <laughs> they were pioneers in this in this um, whole franchise. And he uh, was waiting for the computer and I was just sitting there, you know, doing this, just being a goofball and ended up, you know, they were actually shooting that and they put it into the game. So when I actually saw that as one of my moves, it made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember as a kid, I used to look at that friendship and I'm like, what is she doing? <laughs> oh, just the next shot, you know, being a goofball and, and you know, with it, there was a lot of laughter and stuff during shooting and we had a lot of fun, you know, it was real laid back and, you know, we didn't, I mean, they knew what they were doing, but I had no idea what I was doing. You know, I was just kind of following along what they told me to do and it was all new to me. I wasn't a gamer or anything like that. So um, it was a lot of fun. Nice. Um, late last year, you put on Sonia's costume um, for a photo shoot, and let's face it, you practically broke the internet. Um, <laughs> yeah. How did it feel to put on the costume again after all this time, and what was it like seeing such a positive reception from the community? Oh, it was empowering. I I had no idea what was going to happen, and it took. It, I never put the costume on from the time the last time that I wore it. I think it was on the tour um, when I did oh, the live wow. tour. Um, I used it for promotion and stuff when we go to different dojos and talk to the kids in the schools and or I do, um, you know, TV spots or something like that. And that was the last time that I actually had put on the costume. I bundled it up and, you know, threw it into a bin and it sat in my in my um, basement for 25 years. Wow. And it was my girlfriends, a couple of my girlfriends, Amber and Evelina who said, you should do it. You should put on the costume because I had just turned 50. And we thought, okay, now it's now or never. And, you know, throughout the years, throughout the 25 years, people had asked me, do you still have the costume? And I'd say, yes, you should put it on. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had four kids and just didn't think I would, you know, live up to Sonia. So I was kind of afraid of it. It intimidated me. So when I did put it on, um, I had, you know, coordinated a shoot with a photographer. I'm like, if I'm going to do this, you know, I'm going to have a photographer record it and, and you know, post it. Um, so I came out of the bathroom, you know, with my getup on and and my girlfriend looks at me and she starts going, because she was a Mortal Kombat fan and she was so excited. And it, it kind of made me, I had like an adrenaline rush when I came out because I looked at myself in the mirror. I'm like, oh. Sonia's back. <laughs> so I did feel really empowering. And then when I actually posted that, I was talking to Ed via text beforehand. I'm like, should I do this? And he's like, yeah, do it. And I was sending him the pictures. And he's like, definitely do it, do it. So he <laughs> kind of coaxed me along too. And then um, oh. so when I actually did post it, it was, I just, I was just flabbergasted. I couldn't believe the attention. And I was, I was waiting for, you know, the negative you know, them comparing me to the 25 year old and the 50 year old. And, 
Um, I didn't get any negative comments. I t- still to this day, not, it has all been so positive and I'm so grateful for that. Amazing. Hey, I noticed on Twitter the other day you said, thanks, X. Oh, I mean, Ed. What was that all about? <laughs> oh, you know, just, you know, like an autocorrect, you know? <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. Uh, so look, Carrie, uh, I believe it was in 95 you did the uh, live tour. Uh, perhaps tell us a little bit more uh, of your experience with that. And did you tour in over 200 cities? Um, I'm not sure how many cities we actually toured. I know that 200 cities were planned and it was supposed to be two companies. We were going to have an East Coast and a West Coast. And we were also supposed to go national or international too. Um, but something happened where they decided just to break it down to one, one company. And um, it was the East Coast I think they went with. And that's the one that I was with. And I was doing a lot of promo work that was probably one of the best times of my life. It was so fun. We did it for a full year. You know, we even went down to South America and I had so much fun. And coming off of not having very much martial arts experience and then having to go through this intense training, it was for three months in the Catskill Mountains for 12 hours a day. Um, I had a lot to prove because Pat Johnson didn't want me on the team um, because I didn't have any experience. Everybody else was black belts. So um, I had a lot, a lot to prove and I did it. I I would get up earlier before everybody and I would work out. And, um, you know, if, if somebody was injured, like the other Sonia, if she was injured or whatever, I'd fill in for her spot and there was just no stopping me. I just, you know, I was 110%. And by the end of our training, um, I had learned enough martial arts to get by for a whole show. And um, Pat Johnson, you know, he says, I'm sorry what I said about you in the beginning. He goes, he goes, you got balls of steel. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's all I wanted to hear from my dojo, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was my master. So it, it really almost made me cry. I was so proud at that moment. Absolutely. Nice. Um, last December, I became a parent for the first time. And you mentioned that you have four kids of your own. Um, how do they feel knowing that their mom is Sonia Blade? Oh, they're kind of back and forth. And, and when they were, <laughs> when they were growing up, you know, around what is it, the awkward age, like 10, 12, 13, you know, kids would say stuff to them and they're like, oh, whatever, you know, and <laughs> they, they always keep me grounded. That's for sure. Even to this day, I have. Leah, who everybody is calling Cassie now, and she's just like, oh, yes. oh, why are they calling Cassie? I'm like, you look just like her. Sonia had a daughter. <laughs> you know, I'm continuing the story, and and it's kind of funny how it just kind of worked out. You know, they need to have um, a couple twins in wheelchairs for the next game, huh? <laughs> and then uh, I also have a 20 year old, 21 year old son. So, and they, they now they think it's cool, especially since it exploded. You know, after I put oh, yeah? the- them on they they're th- they're thinking i'm almost almost cool <laughs> <laughs> you're getting there carrie you're getting, getting there, there. Yeah. <laughs> tell us a little bit about your experience as kia in mk mythologies did you enjoy her character design and what are some of the most fondest memories you have on set being kia was pretty fun there there wasn't that much shooting. I mean, there was some acting and stuff that I had to do for film. Um, but Kia was pictures that they took and then they, you know, peeled it and put it onto another, you know, mocap, mocap model. And um, so it wasn't as intense as MK3 because MK3, I had to do all the moves and, and that. And I was also three months pregnant with twins at the time. So That's right. when I would do the, uh, the conventions and stuff, I was getting bigger and bigger. So I had to put like a, a skirt around my leather bra to cover up my belly. And no one even ever noticed. I couldn't believe it. Cause I was <laughs> at three months with twins. You're pretty big. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so wow. Um, as I got bigger and bigger, my, my chest got bigger and bigger too. So I think maybe it kind of distracted things. <laughs> <laughs> um, after all these years, I think it's pretty incredible that, all the original actors uh, keep in contact still. And, you know, you, you always travel to conventions and you're always meeting with fans. Um, 
And really your popularity is only sort of increasing over the years. Um, what's your favorite thing about meeting with fans and experiencing Mortal Kombat, you know, from then till now? Well, I'm sure just as if it, if it was anybody else, you know, you get such a rush from it because they're just, they're looking at you like you're this superhero and, um, it's a huge ego boost. I'm not going to lie. It's a huge ego yeah. boost and it makes me feel good. I, I feel so much love from the fans and, um, it's just a rush every time I go and I love it. And um, this this franchise is gone for so long, and now you know these kids are growing up. Their parents had played MK3, and and um, they're they're playing the game with their parents, so they're they're still like into the characters, and and mm -hmm. they're just as excited as their parents. So the, I mean, their parents are bringing the kids to these conventions now, and it's just it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Well, I mean, clearly you own the Sonya costumes. Do yes. you have anything else Mortal Kombat related in your household, let's say, or did you keep any type of other souvenirs from your time working? Oh, sure. I have like this plastic box full of stuff that I had from, from those years, a lot of magazines. Um, I think I have a couple behind me. <laughs> <laughs> did you look at that? <laughs> I was just going through my box the other day and uh here i've got one with war gods on it this hey is, there it is yeah. <laughs> i had my war gods layout on here let's see if i can find it quick yeah, yeah sure this is uh, maybe you can like edit this out for me flipping through pages <laughs> 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 um Maybe this isn't the one. There was one with a huge layout. Remember this one? Oh, beauty. Look at that. Look at that. I love it. And here we go. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> the fearsome foursome. <laughs> that is good. Yeah, I, I've got a lot of stuff like that. Um, like keychains, frisbees. Um, frisbees yeah i have an mk3 frisbee i'm not okay. even sure why i say that <laughs> but you know i have like um advertisements and stuff from when the games were coming out i always kind of grabbed some ads and you know threw them in my box i i have a, a scrapbook of pictures from when we were doing the the conventions and stuff yeah you didn't get to keep yeah. the kia costume yeah i have the kia costume oh wow okay yeah. excellent yeah. The leather didn't do so well over the years, but you know, maybe I can <laughs> somehow get it reconditioned. <laughs> <laughs> but I have the War Gods costume, uh, Vala. I have MK3, MK4, and Kia. Yeah, I just have this huge costume box. <laughs> just, oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, I always kept the costumes, you know, they didn't have a fuss because I would have to do the, you know, the conventions and stuff, you know, for promo work. So I always just kept the costume with me and they never asked for it back. Hey. I've been offered up to $5,000 <laughs> for the MK3 costume. Really? Mm -hmm. But I still have it. Oh, well, that's <laughs> the spirit. That's what I like to hear. Let the yeah. bidding begin. Yeah. <laughs> but this last, this last um, event that we did at, um, in Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, at Game Terminal. Yeah. Um, a lot of fun. It was huge. That place is huge down there, and I love it. Um, I definitely want to go back next year. I think they're going to do like a 30th anniversary uh, event next year there. Um, I had made a new um, updated version of MK3 Sonia. For oh, it was gorgeous. Event. I loved it. Thank you. I actually sew. I was on the sewing machine doing that. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, they really went all out in that event. I seen a lot of the footage, and it was just spectacular. It was insane. It was insane. Yeah. So much fun. <laughs> um, how much of Sonya's character actually uh, resonates with your personality, and how important is she to you? Well, in the beginning, I didn't think it resonated much at all, but throughout my life, um, we've kind of mirrored each other. We've, I've had, you know, so many traumatic events happen 
since then, you know, with my boys being born with cerebral palsy, um, I had them too early. So um, I was diagnosed with this rare condition later. Um, but when I was pregnant with them, it was undiagnosed. So if we would have known about my condition, we might have been able to, you know, prolong the pregnancy. But I had them three months early. They were just two pounds wow. when they were born. Okay. They were about like this big. Um, w- wedding ring could fit on their wrist. It was, wow. They were just tiny. Um, so that's why they have cerebral palsy. They had, mm-hmm. you know, it damages the brain if you're born too early. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's been a lot of that, you know, where most of my my energies and stuff have been going into the care of my boys. You know, it gets really scary at times where um, my oldest, Luke, almost lost his life last year. Oh, um, oh Wow. I had to bring him to 13 different doctors and nobody knew what was going on and Mayo Clinic wouldn't take him. You know, you hear all these nice things about Mayo Clinic and how great they are, but yet they wouldn't take my son because he wasn't a sure thing. So I learned a lot about that and I had to keep fighting for him. I had to keep, you know, asking these doctors, take a look at him. Let's try this surgery. Um, And he got down, he's five foot 11 or no, five, five foot 10. And he okay. got down to 95 pounds. Wow. And he was, he was like a skeleton. And finally, I found this doctor, um, one of the spine doctors that he had, knew of a doctor to help him gain weight. And I'm like, well, I've talked to other gastroenterologists before, and nobody has any answers. But this guy was on top of things. Um, um, it was at Children's and Lurie's Children's in Chicago. And he put him through all these tests and he, he diagnosed him with gastroparesis, which means the stomach isn't working the way it should. Um, basically, I was feeding him over 4,000 calories a day and he was still losing six pounds a month. So it, the motility in his stomach was, it wasn't taking in the nutrients. So we bypassed that and gave him a J tube and he's gained almost 35 pounds since. Yeah, nice. he's at 127 now, and he's doing good. He's going to live. <laughs> That's so, amazing. Wow. My hair is Thanks just recovering. Um, all my hair fell out at that time from all the stress. So I've got all oh, these. Yeah. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it's all growing back now, and <laughs> it was a stressful time. And then oh, the swimming stuff came around, and so that was kind of fun <laughs> to try to, like, <laughs> you know, keep things fun. Everything got really serious there for a while. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that. I'm, I'm so glad it worked out the way it did and he's doing better and, yeah. uh, you look, you look better than ever, Carrie. So thank you. Thank you. But I mean, that's, that's how Sonia does resonate with me is she's a yeah. fighter and, um, I've been doing a lot of fighting in the last 25 years. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. How was your relationship with Ed Boone and John Tobias? What are some of your best memories working with them? Um, they're quiet. They're very quiet. But I felt like we really had great connections because, you know, I'm an artist. They're artists. And they'd always invite me back, you know, to their to their office. And they would show me what they were doing on the computer or the drawings and stuff. And it just fascinated me because this, that whole world was so new to me with the, the programming and, and, and all that stuff. So, um, we are pretty close. I, I, I can call them both a friend to this day and, um, I feel very comfortable with them. They're great guys. They're great guys. I, they're snickering, you know, when, something would go down and you know ed's ed's face would go like <laughs> <laughs> he's a troll on twitter he's infamous for being a troll i love it so am i so yeah <laughs> <laughs> um in a couple of our previous episodes we spoke with uh, john turk and leah montalongo regarding the possibility of a, a cameo in a future mortal kombat movie um, if you were offered the chance um, to do so, would you be on board with that idea? Oh, absolutely. Oh, my gosh, that would be so much fun. I would love that. <laughs> Bring on the old Sonia. You know, maybe yeah. cast come in for the next movie and it would be more appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to assume that you did, in fact, see the movie. If so, 
what were some of your general thoughts and did you enjoy Jessica's portrayal of Sonia? I did. I, I thought the movie was enjoyable. I mean, my, my go-to is the first movie because you know, mm. it's the first, <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought Sonia did a great job. I just, I, I wish they would have given her a little bit more sex appeal because if you look at pictures like on her Instagram and stuff, she's a very sexy woman. So that's, oh, no that's, doubt. that's kind of hoping for, you know, bring a little more sex appeal instead of this stoic bitch, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she needs a little more charisma and sexuality, maybe. <laughs> hey, oh, hey, Johnny's going to be in the sequel, you know. She could uh, do something about that. Maybe. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've been a model and a stunt woman, but later in life you emerged as an incredible abstract artist. So... Um, tell us about your artworks and what you're doing in this space. Well, that kind of just happened. You know, I did a little bit of painting in high school and um, I was kind of a, an art geek. I'd spent a lot of time in the art room and, you know, all of my electives would be art related. And then I got away from it, you know, getting into modeling, having kids and, and all that stuff. I was marathoning. And I was a personal trainer. I was helping other people marathon at the time, and I kept on injuring myself. And I was finally diagnosed with this rare condition called Ehlers-Danlos. And the doctor said, I can't believe you did five marathons. You know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to do that with, with your condition. That's why you're injuring yourself. Um, so I had to find something else to do instead of running 26 miles because um, it was just wreaking havoc on my body. I would dislocate things. I would get tendonitis. I would just, it, I was always fighting something that was going on with my body. Um, so I decided, oh, at that time, my husband now was just my friend. And he's like, well, if you could put away everything and do whatever you wanted, you know, what would it be? And I said, I don't know. I guess I would just start painting, open up an art gallery or something like that. And he goes, do it. And he got into my head. And so I started doing it. And um, I couldn't believe what was coming off of my paintbrush. I didn't know that I could paint realism. You know, my, my first works were, were realism and it was almost like I was a copy machine. So, and, and people were, were like, what, what's going on? And then I was being invited to these, these art shows that you couldn't get into in Chicago. Wow. And that was surprising me too. I mean, Chicago is pretty competitive. And I was getting into all these art shows. And then I started going abstract from that because the realism, you know, though it was really fun for me, it, it didn't really express what I was feeling inside. So I started doing abstract stuff. And that's where I really started getting excited about it. Yeah. yeah you definitely got some talent there. Is that some of your work behind you? Yeah. That is um, actually wow. iron, liquid iron on canvas. Wow. What I do yeah. is I it's ground up and put into like an acrylic medium and I paint it on and then I add a chemical to oxidize it. So I get to use my, my chemistry skills and, and my art <laughs> at the same time, left and right brain. It works pretty good for me. <laughs> no kidding. That looks phenomenal. Thank you. Absolutely. Alrighty. We'll jump into the final round. I'll play the sound effect. Final round. So in this section, we will <laughs> we will um, ask you some questions, and you can answer them with striking speed. So, Toasty, did you want to take it away? Absolutely. Carrie, what is your favorite food? Sushi. Ah. Biggest pet peeve? Um, chewing loudly. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Give us your best Australian Kano impression. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know Australian accent. Um, hey, well, I give you a ten out of ten on that one. That was fantastic. Thanks. That was good. That was <laughs> good. <laughs> Des describe your pee, <laughs> yeah. Describe your strangest fan encounter. Strangest fan encounter. Um, guys aren't that strange maybe i'm strange <laughs> <laughs> um was there one, one that just kind of shocked you threw you off um i would i would guess it was a policeman when i was about to be arrested and it, oh. saved, me, it saved me from being arrested when i was on tour 
we were down in um, New Orleans and Hakeem, who played Jax on the tour, didn't get along with the hostess and they ended up, the hostess ended up like throwing something at him and it split in two and hit me in the face. So then I went after him. I jumped over the the (laughs) desk and went for his neck. And pretty soon, like the whole restaurant was in this (laughs) this rumble. This muscle. (laughs) Within a couple of minutes, I was put in a headlock by this huge person behind me. And it was Sydney from the tour who played Shang Tsung. He's a Samoan. And I looked up and I go, hi, Sid. And he goes, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so we were hauled back behind the restaurant with, from the police. And um, the manager was holding his chin. He was all bloody. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what happened to you? And he's like, you punched me. Going for the other guy, (laughs) Um, but the police—they were about to arrest us, and I'm like, you know, start just talking, and you know, we have to fight every day on stage, and everybody wants to fight with us, and you know, we just we just want to sit down and and have a nice dinner and and be quiet, and you know, I felt like I was egged on, and and he's like, yeah, you're so many blade. (laughs) Can I have your autograph? He's writing stuff down, you know, for you know information then he's like can i have your autograph i'm like (laughs) that is amazing that's an amazing story i guess that would be my strangest fan encounter (laughs) fair enough (laughs) best piece of advice you've ever been given yes i have one that came right to my head it's one my dad told me when i was probably about 14 or 16 and somebody was talking trash about me and he said Carrie, you know, when one person calls you an asshole, that's one thing. Just shake it off. But when a lot of people are calling you asshole, turn around and start taking a look at yourself. Nice. Mm. Wow. If you could time travel to any decade, what would you travel to? Mm, Probably the 90s. Oh, I love the 90s. Really, the glory days. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Before kids. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to when throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, do you have any secret talents? Um, I'm very flexible. I don't know. You probably already know that. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. That's good. That's good. <laughs> um, if you had to pick your favorite movie or TV show. Shawshank Redemption movie. Oh, classic. Funniest thing that's ever happened to you. <laughs> um, God, there's so many things. Oh, I know. I know. I decided to get a face peel. You know, um, it was probably in, I don't know, 2015 or so. I decided to go to the doctor and get, you know, a face peel. And at that time it was by Obagi. So when they would put the face peel on, like a chemical peel, your face would turn blue. And Mm -hmm. um, so it was just a way of them not being able to burn your skin. So I did this face peel and then I went home and one of my boys was having an emergency. So I ended up having to bring him to the ER with his blue face. You know, it was very oh. serious. It was a very uh-huh. serious um, situation at the time. But here, I walk in like a Smurf, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I decided just to kind of screw with all the nurses. I didn't even pay any attention to it. So every time they would come up to me, they were like, you know, they want to say something, but they couldn't. <laughs> That's blue face. And finally, by the end end of the um, the time that we were there, I told me I had a face peel today, and of course, my son makes me bring him to the ER. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Last question. What is your guilty pleasure? French fries. Oh, that's a good one. Don't blame me there. <laughs> ketchup or no ketchup? Um, it depends on what kind they are. You know, like if they're from Portillo's, I like them just plain, just steaming hot and plain. Nice. But, you know, if they're like those really big, thick ones... Some ketchup is good. Yes. Nice. <laughs> All right, Kerry. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure having you with us today. Thank you so much for well, the chance for to chat me. with you. Uh, where can um, we can find our fans follow your work and find you on social media? 
at Carrie Ann Gallery. My handle's pretty much the same on everything. And then my website is carrieann.gallery. So. Fantastic. All right. Perfect. Well, thank you again. God bless and take care. Thank you. Okay, see you, Carrie. See you later. Thank you. I'll see you. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. This has been an honor being uh, such a big Sonya Blade fan. Uh, we hope you learned something new today, and we would like to thank you for supporting this podcast. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for our next episode. If you're a Mortal Kombat Conquest fan, uh, you're in for a treat. Uh, you know, I've always been uh, very keen on this particular show. Purple Rain! Purple Rain! Sorry about that, Chris. I I don't know what happened what there. That? Damn phone hiccup. I don't know. Mm. Uh, anyway, uh, I hope you guys are doing super well. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for joining us, guys. Stay safe and stay flawless.